It continues. Politics. More drama than television shows on primetime TV. A week ago, former Prime Minister Peter O'Neill was released on a 5,000 kina bail after his arrest at the Jackson's International Airport on the afternoon of May the 23rd. He was taken to the National Fraud Office for questioning before spending some time at the Barocco Police Station. O'Neill was charged on allegations of authorizing the purchase of two generators from Israel in 2013. After a lengthy process, bail was granted at 12 midnight and the former Prime Minister was released at 1 a.m. In a media statement to the nation, the Fraud Office alleged that in early December 2013, O'Neill, in a letter to the then Acting Secretary for Treasury, Di Rivella, was directed that he identifies 50 million kina from the 2013 national budget and have it transferred to the Bank of PNG for the purpose of purchasing two turbo diesel generators for Port Moresby and Ley. He further stated that PNG Power Limited had been consulted on the technical aspects and had agreed to the purchase. Police investigations revealed that late in December 2013, 50 million kina checks were paid in to BPNG by the Department of Treasury that it was then cleared and transferred to Ella Group Limited by the bank. The investigation found no proper procurement process was followed. It also found that the tax clearance certificate issued for the 50 million kina from the IRC was in the name of Israeli Electrical Corporation and not Ella Group. There was no contract of sale for the purchase of the two generators. After the 50 million kina was paid to Ella Group, it is alleged that O'Neill then sponsored an NEC submission for the approval of 94 million kina for the purchase of two generator sets from the Israeli Electrical Corporation. The NEC approved the 94 million kina and a proper procurement process was followed. The matter was then reported to the Police National Fraud and Anti-Corruption Directorate for investigation by then opposition leader Belden Nama. It's because there was no cabinet decision on this particular payment to be made. There is no money allocated for 15 million kina, 50 million kina, to purchase two 15 megawatt generators for Port Mosby and Lay. On May the 17th, 2014, the then opposition had queried then State Investment Minister Ben Micah on new claims on the 50 million kina PNG power deal for the purpose of those generators. All in all, the deal fell true and the aftermath has sent repercussions through the political arena in Waigani. Then only Mr. O'Neill has been arrested. What about all the persons, public or private, who are involved in the transaction? That is where my question is. Opposition leader Belden Nama has been firing heavy rhetoric in the direction of current Prime Minister James Marape as well, who in his capacity as Finance Minister, has his signatures on the documents regarding that deal. O'Neill himself has responded along similar lines, claiming it was a highly politicized case and had been influenced and pushed by dark and shadowy figures behind the scenes wanting to force an arrest. On his social media page, Prime Minister James Marpe assured the nation that the work of police would not be impeded by him as Prime Minister in the face of many allegations that are of public concern. And it isn't just the Israeli generated deal being queried. Nama put in PMJM on the spot regarding the highly contentious UBS loan. Marape replying, I have nothing to hide. Prime Minister James Marape has reiterated that the 28 million kina used for the UBS loan commission of inquiry has nothing against the backdrop of Papua New Guinea losing 3 billion kina in the process. Marape has said he had answered all the questions raised by Nama in the February 2020 session of Parliament. Marape further questioned why Nama is wishing to disband the inquiry or to protect someone. On a similar note, the Prime Minister says he has nothing to hide about the purchase of the Israeli generators in 2014. He maintains his stance to be a state witness. Additionally, in the week gone by, Nama's court application against the election of Marape as Prime Minister was rejected on the grounds that Nama himself had faced a leadership tribunal in 2018 which affected the competency of this matter in his capacity as the opposition leader. 
What is frustrating and perhaps alarming is that this is a trend that is slowly becoming normal, whereby leaders are brought to being held accountable for multiple allegations while in office. COVID-19 aside, PNG has serious issues to address before moving forward. Already facing a massive deficit after a blowout budget with an additional 5.6 billion kin alone taken just over a month ago and being barely able to cope with provision of basic services to the majority of rural PNG, the government is coming under increasing pressure to account for its spending. And especially for all these deals and agreements being signed that in some cases haven't been able to provide a direct injection into the economy and largely into easing the burdens faced by citizens. Parliament sits on Tuesday for the June session and it will be interesting to see what transpires, especially considering the movements that have been occurring between political parties with what seems to be jumps from sinking ships. One can only hope that sooner Instead of down the line, all these become sorted so that Papua New Guineans can feel, rather than hear, that we are a rich nation going forward. <laughs>